In this video, we will review the materials you will need, prepare your palette, talk about primary colors, set up a color chart, talk about standing to paint, set up the still life, draw it, and finally paint it. And it's time to prepare the palette by adding linseed oil and sort of grinding it into these pores of the wood. My still life is going to drop all the way down to say roughly this area and that way I can have this nice oval shape, I can have some of these nice folds and pleats and then I want it to stretch all the way up just above this, uh, the, the flower. So, so I need to sort of adjust in here my vertical composition. That seems to be about the right shade green I would say a little over rich side so I'm gonna introduce just a teeny bit of purple okay see now we're getting complex that's one two three four colors it's all about where you finish the brush stroke honestly you first need to select a good starting position when you're doing these long bold blending strokes select a good starting position here and then figure out a way to release the brush so it leaves you a nice finishing stroke. Look intensely at the canvas, not the brush, so you can make sure and just see where the subtle blends are. I have all my mid-tones in, very, very simple, elementary in fact. <laughs> now I want to bring in a big chunk of that red and let's grab them big chunk of purple and start shifting this thing down, down, down. Okay, because we really got to darken it up. I'm going to scoop in a little blue maybe. So the pressure stroke is a, is a useful tool. You want to learn to control the pressure on the tip. I described to you earlier the fact that I press hard on the bristles when I want to make a clean line and then when I want to blend I press very very lightly. Okay, pretty good little highlight there. Blend those edges. Remember where you let the brush off of the canvas is as important as any other stroke because where you lift the tip of the brush off is exactly where the paint is like altered the most. So the lift off point is as important as your starting mark. That's probably about right. I think so, yeah. Let's go ahead and just start picking out the, the lightest bits. And then I'm quickly trying to fade this one away because the fade away on the orange is for some reason a little more intense. So we just take our time and scrub this baby away right to the edge. We've worked in our dark under here and faded away to the light so we're good on that. I like it. The only problem I see here that I do not like that I did is that we're missing the warm. But that was part of our three point plan. I'm going with pure burnt sienna. We'll take a little slight fade over now. We start to work in some of this texture a little bit. There's two light sources on this bottle. Some carbon in between the two of them. And you can start to, start to see where I'm going to leave the uh, highlight. I, I can see one bright, almost white highlight. See how it matches my brush? There, especially. Okay, and this end I'm going to fade away. Blended away so there's no majorly harsh corners. 
I want to get my mind around this. Let's stop and let's just think about it. We're going to do on canvas blending with the olive green of the bottle and allow this burgundy to blend through. There's just so many reflections. You can, you can develop the curvature and uh, you know, your highlights, the lights that are bouncing off the bottle all need to be treated. So this is probably the most technical part of this entire painting. A lot of times with the highlights, you can go ahead and pull off a big bold stroke like that one. And uh, that sort of thing is uh, not only fun to do, <laughs> but actually pretty effective. You just need to plan it before you hit it. It's a narrow but sharper highlight. And then the brush down, make the brush tip fairly narrow. Slowly and methodically building towards the highlights. few, just a few, bold, dark strokes. Painting glass is all about painting the reflections. Even an hour or two of drying is just enough so that your highlights can have a chance of shining through. Thinning your brush down, no clumps on the brush. Spin the brush off to get her clean and smear it flat. Some nice yellow with a small amount of a red to get a good orange and that matches quite well. Now I'm looking at this again and I see two distinct um, highlights. start to blend away. Following the contour of the shape being round, twirl out. Watch this little technique. Neutralize with some more brown. Brown acts like a neutralizer with greens. So that's exactly what we're adding. Okay, now let's just look in here and see. Should I go with a super dark in there maybe? For some ultra contrast? Yeah. Let's try to get something bold going here. Not much of it, just a minimal amount of ultra bold. The trick to bringing these lights out is to clean the brush off every time because you basically lay down the light and pick up the dark. So you do have to clean this brush quite a bit. 